So at the end of the first half, the score, the Michigan Wolverines 7, Texas A&M 3. Bill Fleming now looking for Bo Beckler to see if he can get a word with him. And it'll have to be a quick one because this is a man who wants to spend as much time as he can with his team. He needs to get that offense on track. Yeah, here's Bill. Okay, we've got just a minute with Bo Schembechler. Bo, is it the kind of first half you thought it was going to be? Well, tough? yeah, it's a tough game. I, I don't like the penalties and fumbles. Uh, but other than that, it's a, it's a wild-hitting game. And How about Woodard? Is he as good as you thought uh, he was? He's tough. You know, you got to stop him. He's awfully big. Okay, best of luck in the second half. All right, the word from Coach Bo Schembechler. And, of course, we're going to be back here with more halftime activities as well as the Fireman's Fund twice back. Again, a 96-yard scoring drive, two turnovers by State Ford, and any chances the Spartans had of scoring. A big halftime show coming up. Bob Foreman, the Michigan State Athletic Director, Joe Kearney, both fans, a great show. Stay with us, the same spot in your radio dial over this, the Michigan 7, Michigan State Zip Football Network. And uh, don't mention the other aspect of my football, will you? <laughs> you mean the kicking? You're, you're still concerned about it? No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Before you go, that drive, that 96-yard drive was a masterpiece. Yeah, it, we did a good job on that drive, and and uh, we should be moving more consistently. We are. We got to do a better job second half. Well, how about defense? Well, defense good. They make the big plays. We put them in bad field position a couple of times, and they pulled us out. But they've done that all year. Okay. Good luck. Coach, Woo! Coach Schembecker, finally it happened for you. That's right, and I'm, I've never been more pleased, Merlin. Uh, we've had um, a lot of great success in the Michigan football program, but we've never won this game since I've been there. And it's one of the greatest thrills of my life. If it had happened again, if you had lost again, do you think you would have relieved the talk about a jinx? Uh, uh, no, the jinx, there's no jinx here. We've always played hard. We've just come up a little bit short. This time we didn't. You had thanks, thanks to some of these guys. <laughs> you had a little magic from number one there. Tell me how important he was to you today. Anthony Carter um, has more effect on the game than any single player I've ever coached. And um, he may not look like it, and sometimes um, he's standing out there and nothing happens. But sooner or later, he gets it. Congratulations to you. A wonderful victory, and I'm sure you'll carry it proudly back to Michigan with you. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you very much. Let's go. We asked Bo Schimbeckler if this is a typical Michigan team. Yes, I think so. Um, you know, we've, um, uh, we've played well at times. We've had some trouble at times, but we've had a lot of injuries defensively, and um, that's uh, bothered us a little bit. But it's a typical Michigan team. It's been uh, fun to coach. Uh, we played a lot tougher teams. Maybe that's it. I, or maybe we aren't quite as good as we have been in the past. But, um, you know, I, that remains to be seen. But, no, I, I think it's a typical Michigan team. And, uh, and uh, we're enjoying the season. We'll enjoy a lot more if we win these last four. You have lost five or six stars on defense. But back when you ranked number one in the nation starting in, did you feel that was a fair rating at that time? Well, our concern was defensively, Jim. And we... Um, we weren't sure that we were strong enough defensively. And then even before the season started, the injuries started to hit us. And, um, and now, um, you know, we're, we're without uh, probably five starters in this game, maybe six. We have one we may not be able to start. And if that's the case, uh, we're playing a lot of young people. But uh, I don't feel bad about that. They're enthusiastic, and we may make some mistakes and, and things like that. But um, uh, we'll, we'll get after them. I think it'll be a good ball game. And right now... Tim Brandt is in Columbia, South Carolina, standing by with the man about whom we just spoke, Bo Schembechler. Tim? All right, Bo Schembechler, you come in here. You had some questions at the beginning of the year, and I'm telling you, it looks like your kind of club, big, strong, durable, just dominated the line of scrimmage. Well, I think we did. We were, I think we were a little bigger up front than um, South Carolina, and I think that was probably the most important factor in the game. You go against Notre Dame and you go against South Carolina, two pretty good ball clubs, and I know you were looking for some answers earlier. But it's got to be a lot better mentally for the kids to go against teams like this than to, to load up with some of the, the weaker teams. Well, you know, I, unless it takes its toll on us, I don't think it will. Uh, I would say that if you play the better teams and beat them, it's bound to make you a better team. Talk about the good things now. You're 2-0. You played extremely well today. But uh, on the downside, too, Bo, it looks like you're getting a little nicked up, a couple injuries. Yeah, we are. Um, several of our, We played without our center and lost him in the first period. Of course, Mike Mowry didn't play today. Eric Campbell, our flanker, didn't play. Some backup people are hurt, but I think that's kind of true of everybody. I hope we don't get a lot of injuries like we did last year. All right, congratulations to you, Bo. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. All right, so let's take it back now to New York. Here's Jim Lampley. Let's go down on the field to Pat O'Brien. Pat, 
All right, thank you, Brent. You're about to lose another goalpost here, Bull. Who do you want to talk about first, your offense or defense? Well, our, our team has played well all year long, Pat. We've been very proud of this Michigan team. Um, they come to play every week. I can't say enough about them. It's been a great year of coaching for me, and it's been a great year for 1985 for Michigan. What is it with this team? I've seen you quoted saying this team is very special to you. It is because I every single one of these guys have um, done everything they could to come back from that uh, dismal season of a year ago, and we did it. Maybe we didn't win the title, but uh, there are not too many teams better than us in the country. Jim Harborough had a great hot arm today, didn't he? Well, he's, he's had that right along. Uh, he's going to be a great quarterback, and uh, he was great today. What do you mean, going to be a great quarterback? <laughs> well, he's coming back next year, so we'll... All right, let's get, Bo, let's get Bo back to safety, back to Brent. All right, Pat. Thank you, and again, congratulations to Bo Schembechler and his entire staff. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? Coach Bo Schembechler hasn't had too many chances to savor the sweet taste of Rose Bowl victory, but tonight, Bo, I imagine you're going to take a mighty big swig out of that chalice. Well, I'm sure everybody thought when we were down 14 3 and a half that we didn't have a chance, but our feeling was that we hadn't played well the first half and that we could score on this team and we can defense this team, and all we have to do is to go out and prove it. And uh, this is a great group of guys, and they came back and showed their, uh, what they could do. In the past, Michigan teams that have been behind haven't had the capacity to come from behind. But you have a much more versatile offense this year, it appears. Yeah, we, op we opened it up a lot in this game. We, were, um, we did a lot of things different, missed some opportunity. Actually, the truth of the matter is, Mike, we shouldn't have had it this close. But uh, we just we didn't capitalize and uh, made some mistakes in the kicking game. But uh, as it all turned out, we won, so it's all, all right. Defensively superb in the second half. Are you proud of or uh, happy the way your team contained Rodney Pete? He did score twice, but contained him pretty well. I thought we did a good job on Pete. Uh, he's a great football player, make no mistake. I thought my defense was tremendous. They put a lot of pressure on him and, um, you know, shut him out the second half. That's, that, that's why we won the game. Well, Coach, to the victor, go to the spoils. And here to promote, uh, present the Rose Bowl Championship Game Trophy. The president of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses, Mr. Jack Bigger. Jack? Well, as president of the Tournament of Roses, I'd like to present to you our brand new 75th brand new. anniversary well, memorial. Not a you, Thank you, Jack. Not a you, well, Thank you, you, Jack. You're welcome. On behalf of some great Wolverines, let's go, man. I accept this trophy. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Well done. And Michigan now with a big step up on the way to Pasadena. Here's Mike with Bo. Coach, uh, great teams save great performances for big games, and Michigan proved once again that it is indeed a great team. Well, when we had to um, when we had to move the ball down there and score and put the game out of reach, we did it. I thought it was a great performance by my team. I'm very proud of them. And um, we came in and played a tough team. This is a heck of a team here. And that quarterback can scare you to death. But I'm very proud of our defense. Second half didn't give them any points. And, um, and we did what was necessary to win. And that goal line stand was something special. You know, everybody talked about how great the Illinois defense was. Was your defense a little miffed at uh, some of the attention they were getting and say, hey, listen, we're pretty darn good too? They're kind of a no-name group. And uh, probably not many of them will make all conference. But they know how to play defense. They know where to go and what to do. And um, he hit some passes on us, old Mike, because he's awfully good. But what impressed me was that um, when it got down to the nitty-gritty, we pounded that ball in there on the old-fashioned way. And um, I like that. Well, Coach, uh, we know for a fact, because we talked to your mom earlier today during our telecast, she sends her best, but she's worried about you. Now she can rest a little easier. Well, I was afraid she wanted Johnny Makovic to win. <laughs> she likes Johnny so much. But, uh, no, I'm sure I'm, I'm real pleased. This is a great day for us. Okay, well, congratulations. See you down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So your final score you see reflected there, 24-10. The Big Ten standings now shows Michigan all alone at the top. The game is over, and the 
Michigan Wolverines have won it by a score of 28 to 18. Here's Mike. Well, Bob, this football game was... Coach, this football game was sort of a microcosm of your entire season. You had moments of greatness, moments when you weren't so good, but in the end, when it counted, you were able to put the Buckeyes away. Well, turnovers hurt us, and uh, let's uh, give some credit to the Ohio State team. They're a vastly improved football team, and uh, we're a little uh, hurt, you know. With, once we lost Horde, now we lost both our tailbacks. But the fact remains we won the game. That's our count. De defensively, I think J.J. Grant epitomize what this team is all about. I mean, he's been hurt every single down. He's playing hurt. And um, the defense uh, hung in there. But uh, if we hadn't turned the ball over, we could have had a nice lead at halftime. But uh, as it turned out, we had to fight for our lives. Is there anything wrong with Michael Taylor's arm? Yeah, a little bit. He uh, had a little problem during the week. And have you heard anything more about Veda Murray? We saw him being taken in the ambulance. What did the, your doctors tell you? I got my fingers crossed there. and. Um, but um, he had feeling. It's not like he was paralyzed. He had feeling. But he was out for quite some time. Um, those things always scary. Well, congratulations on your second consecutive trip to the Rose Bowl. Thank you very much. Oh, Schembechler, Keith. All right, Mike, thanks very much. The Chevrolet most valuable players are Scotty Graham for Ohio State, Leroy Horde for Michigan.